Could everything you've been told about time travel be a lie? What if you found out the government doesn't want you to discover the truth? Because the consequences could be devastating to humanity. Today, I'll show you the simple facts about time travel so you can prepare yourself and know the truth about the different ways it's possible. Imagine you and I are wearing the exact same watch and we set the same time right before we launch into space. In my shuttle, I'm traveling around 28,000 kilometers per hour relative to the Earth. If I were to make two orbits around the Earth before I meet back up with you and we compare watches, we'll see that less time has passed for me. It's a very small amount of time, but it's still a difference nonetheless. This is called time dilation. And it simply means that according to Einstein's theory of relativity, time that is measured along different trajectories is affected by differences in either gravity or velocity, each of which affects time in a multitude of ways. One example we can look at is the International Space Station, the ISS, that's floating around the Earth, where time works slightly differently. Astronauts who spend about six months on the ISS age in a smidge less than we do down here on Earth, about 0.005 seconds less. It's not much, but it would be a lot crazier if they could zoom around close to the speed of light. But hold up. Things can get crazier. Imagine you're on a super fast spaceship traveling to a planet that's 10 light years away. If you were zooming at 90% of the speed of light, you might think it would take you about 11 years to get there. But guess what? On your spaceship, it would only feel like 4.4 years. Crazy, right? But here's a question. Is this time travel? Well, yes. You see, when you come back from that space journey, you're almost nine years older, but people on Earth would be 22 years older. So you've jumped 13 years into the future. Traveling to the future is safer for humanity than traveling back in time because we can't change what happens. Imagine if governments had this technology. All hell would break loose on Earth. Imagine how incredible it would be to see the dinosaurs, the pyramids of Egypt being built, or even listen to Beethoven perform. Perhaps there is something important you could have done or stopped in the past that would dramatically change the course of history. Let's imagine for a second that you had a tiny device that enabled you to travel back in time. You skim through the instructions and it has a huge red warning about something called the grandfather paradox. You don't really understand and think, wow, visiting my grandfather would be awesome. You set the dial and press the button and instantly you're watching your 30-year-old grandfather as he's boarding an airplane to travel across the Atlantic Ocean. You notice that he's eating a chocolate bar and you remember how your grandfather used to steal all your candy when you were a kid. So you decide to sabotage his plane by pouring a bag of Skittles into the fuel tank. A few hours later, you hear on the radio that the plane went down and nobody survived. No more grandpapa. Now your grandfather won't be able to steal your candy. Hooray! But wait a second. If you just killed your grandfather before he met your grandmother, does that mean that your mother wouldn't have been born? And so you yourself wouldn't have been born to be able to go back in time and kill him? And maybe this is what that big red warning was about. Here's the big issue. If you were never born, you couldn't have killed your grandfather. So because you didn't kill him, he's still alive. But wait a second. That would mean that your grandfather met your grandmother. Your mother was born and you would be alive. And now you can go back in time and kill him. This situation creates an endless loop that goes on and on. This is called the grandfather paradox. It's one of the theories about time travel that makes it so fascinating, and it's why many scientists think traveling to the past isn't possible. There's another theory called the Novikov self-consistency principle that says you can't mess up the past because any event that could change it just won't happen. However, not a lot of scientists buy into this one. Nothing has been proven and it could only be a matter of time before someone in the future discovers the secret to traveling back in time and changes the course of our history forever. One day we may wake up and everything has changed. However, there is another way to travel to our past. Imagine if you could make a shortcut through space-time, like digging a tunnel through a mountain. You enter at one point and pop out at another. Now, imagine if one end of this tunnel experienced time differently. Maybe because it was near a big heavy star with different gravitational forces, or because it was traveling through space at a different velocity. If you entered this end of the tunnel, 
you might pop out at the other end in the past. Let's make it simpler. Let's say we both have watches that read the year 2000. We're both in space next to each entrance of the wormhole. I fire up my wormhole dragging spaceship and accelerate one entrance to the wormhole to near light speed and then bring it back to you. My watch now reads 2005 and yours reads 2010. If our friend now entered the accelerated entrance, they would now exit the stationary entrance you're beside in the year 2005. They've just traveled back in time five years. However, one downside is that you can only travel back to when the wormhole was first made. So if you made a wormhole today, sorry, but we can't use it to go visit Atlantis. So it's rather a path through time rather than a way to travel to certain points in the past and future at will. What would happen if wormholes were secretly created in the near future? Governments would have the power to travel back in time and make all sorts of devastating changes. That's one way to control the past. But what about the future? The science of freezing people to wake them up later is called cryonics. And believe it or not, it's been around since the 1960s. But hold on, it's not as simple as it sounds. Cryonics is a very tricky and experimental field. People who work in cryonics think of death not as a single moment, but as a slow process. They have to think this way because, well, it's against the law to freeze somebody who is still alive. So, here's how it works. When someone chooses to be cryopreserved, their body is prepared and frozen minutes after they've officially passed away. The idea is to drop the body temperature super low, like minus 130 degrees Celsius. That's colder than the coldest day in Antarctica. The hope is that this extreme cold will keep enough of the brain's information intact so that, in the future, doctors and scientists could bring the person back to life. But here's the catch. Such freezing temperatures can cause lots of damage to the human body. Even with all the safety measures in place, it's a risky process. So, scientists today are really banking on the future. They're hoping that technology will advance enough to repair the damage at a teeny tiny level and restore the brain back to working order. So, if one day we do manage to revive someone who was cryopreserved, they would wake up in the future. It's not as easy as cartoons like Futurama make it to look, but breakthroughs in science in the near future could certainly make this possible. What would happen to future civilizations if powerful individuals with problematic ideas could time travel? Breakthroughs in the field of AI have created the opportunity for incredibly powerful artificial intelligence to make big leaps in the field of science and technology. It's only a matter of time before AI finds our blind spots and discovers a secret to traveling through time. This technology gets more intelligent every second. So we must prepare for discoveries that could enable the wrong people to travel through time. Hopefully, time travel will be regulated and protected so that only brief visits to the future will be available and wormhole manipulation or use will be prohibited. The real question is, would you travel through time?